I went ahead and fixed the drawings for the right arm. So this is the result. So we are done with the character's body and the features, except for the facial features. So I'm going to show you how we can set up the drawing replacements, drawing substitutions for the hands as well as for the eyes. And then we can wrap up rigging this character. I'm going to get into the left hand and see what we have here. If you remember, we put all the drawing replacements of the hand gestures into a group inside of Photoshop and they came in as a composition in After Effects. So if I dive into the left hand composition, you can see that all of these layers are stacked on top of each other and the composition setting carries the length as well as the frame rate of our main composition except for its resolution. So we need to crop the composition so it's not containing any empty pixels that is going to affect the performance of our composition inside of After Effects. So I'm going to use the region of interest. In this case, since I'm not deforming any of these drawings, I'm going to turn on all of these drawings to see all of them together and make sure that the region of interest is containing all of them and it's not containing any empty pixels. I'm going to crop the composition to region of interest and immediately going back to my main comp and make sure that I reposition this so it's in the same spot that it's supposed to be and also a take care of the anchor point of it as well. For that, I'm going to turn off the other layers and just focus on one of the drawings to make it a little bit easier to reposition it back on the arm. I'm going to turn on the pins for the left hand as well and I'm going to reposition this hand. My character was designed in 1920 by 1080 pixels that's why when I zoom in that much I'm losing the quality which is fine I just want to make sure that the drawings are lined up and while I'm here I'm going to fix the anchor point as well by hitting Y to switch to pan behind tool move anchor point tool. I'm going to do the same thing for the right hand fixing the anchor point. So we are done in terms of cleaning up these two compositions. The next step is to see how the drawing replacements work inside of After Effects. Since we are using pre-comps or compositions inside compositions, these pre-comps have their own timeline. They can be made out of multiple layers. And what we are going to do during the animation is that depending on what we want to see out of each one of these hand gestures, we need to turn on, for example, this hand gesture and turn off the other one. So this is how we switch between these drawings. And now you can see that this hand is changed to this drawing. The way we are going to handle this is we are going to use a tool called Time Remap Tool which allows us to target any specific frame of any composition or any footage. In order to be able to show that I'm going to have each one of these drawings to be only sitting on one single frame. In order to do that I'm going to make the length of all of these layers to become only one single frame and I can use the shortcut Alt close brackets to cut them to the position of my playhead and I I can manually also fix them to become only one frame and then I'm going to sequence them in a way that on every single frame of this composition I'm only seeing one of these. If I'm dealing with only few layers I can manually sequence them and I need to turn on all of these layers. Now if I go back here I can see that for every single frame I'm only seeing one of these drawings. The next step is to make sure that the length of this composition is only the length of all of these drawings. So in this case I have four layers, four frames. So the length of this comp can be only four frames. So I can go to the composition settings, change the duration of this comp to only four frames. So now I have a four frames composition that on each one of its frames I have one of these drawings. Now I need to switch between each one of these frames outside that composition. If I right click on this and go to the time, enable time remap tool, I'm able to access each one of those frames outside that composition. So in this case, what I get by default when I enable time remap tool is two keyframes on the time remap attribute. And if I scroll through my timeline, you can see that on frame one, because of these two keyframes, it's showing me frame number one of that composition, next showing frame three, and so on. Since these are keyframes, I can manually set these keyframes. I can get rid of this second one. And now this entire composition is only showing me the first frame of that composition. 
at this point I can switch to frame number two for example and now you can see that I'm seeing drawing number two I'm gonna pick another frame so it's a little bit more different so now until frame 44 it's showing frame number zero of that comp when it reaches this keyframe it's going to switch to the other drawing one more thing about dealing with these keyframes is that since these are interpolated keyframes we need to make sure that when we want to see frame number zero of this composition it holds on to that until it reaches the next keyframe by that I mean if I want to immediately switch from drawing number zero to drawing number four I will choose drawing number four which in this case is frame number three of that composition however since these are interpolated keyframes during that transition it's going to show all of those in between drawings as well this is not what I want I want to force after effects to hold on to these keyframes until the next keyframe is showing up so for that I'm going to select all of my keyframes enable toggle hold keyframe and now it's going to hold to this keyframe which is frame number zero of that drawing until it reaches this keyframe and it immediately switches to frame number three so this these are the steps that we need to follow to set up any drawing replacement for our hand gestures or mouth drawing replacements or anything else. We need to make sure that the composition is only as small as the drawings themselves. So we need to crop that. The next step is to make sure that each drawing is sitting on one single frame. And also we trim the length of our composition to only contain those drawings for us. And outside that comp, we need to make sure that we enable toggle hold keyframe on that time remap tool. So it will hold onto that drawing replacement placement as long as we have that keyframe valid it seems that my drawing is slightly off i'm going to reposition that knowing that i'm not having any issue in terms of hierarchy because i'm just moving this layer which is fine as long as its anchor point is sitting in a correct position i should be fine while i'm here i'm going to double check all of the drawings to make sure that things are lining up properly so perhaps in between i'm going to set a keyframe to show drawing number two and set another keyframe to show drawing number three double checking and making sure that these drawings overlappings are fine there might be a need to reposition them individually which i guess it's happening here so it seems that drawing number two needs to be lowered slightly or maybe even pushed to the right so i'm going to to go back to this drawing and select that layer and reposition it. I'll do the same thing for drawing number three and drawing number four as well. So I guess it was the first drawing that was slightly off. I could have just fixed that one instead of all of these three ones. We took care of the left hand. I'm going to do the same thing for the right hand. This time I'm going to use the keyframe assistant and sequence layers and it will sequence them for me. I'm going to limit the length of my composition to only contain these four frames, enabling time remap tool on it, getting rid of the last keyframe and immediately turn it on the toggle hold keyframe on the first one. If I want to test it out, it seems that all the drawings are lining up properly, so it's safe to turn off the guide layer. And I can say that these hands are set up completely now and I can move on to the mouth shapes. So same process, I'm going to speed up the recording here. and the mouth is now ready also to be animated. As for the eyes, we're going to do the same thing because we are having different drawing replacements for the eye. We also have an additional layer that I called it the eye mat. Let's set up the drawing replacements for the eyes and then we're going to see why we have this eye mat and how we can set that up to work hand in hand with the drawing replacements for the eye as well. So I'm going to dive into the eye layer. You can see that I'm having all of those drawing replacements here as well, cropping this to the region of interest. Going back to my main composition and make sure that I reposition it properly. And I'm going to enable timer map tool on it, turning on toggle hold keyframe. I'm going to line it up with the eye mat layer that I had, making sure that since it's moved, it's lined up properly, maybe slightly down. So I'm going to use my keyboard arrow keys to bring it down. And if I switch between different drawing replacements, I can see the different drawings. The way I separated the layers for this eye was to have a separate layer for the white part of the eye going to act as a mat for the pupil. I want to make sure that when the character is closing its eye, for example, in this case, 
case if I switch to the frame number two. I want to make sure that the pupil is not popping out of the boundaries of the eye. I want it to only be visible where the white part of the eye is and I don't want it to be visible outside that. So for that reason I'm going to use this white area of the eye to act as a mat for this pupil. So wherever this white part is the pupil is going to be visible and if the character is closing its eye or the eye is halfway open this pupil is going to be cropped or it's going to be matted out or masked out using that white part. So let's see what we have here in this eye mat composition. Ideally the eye mat or the white part should be exactly named similar to what we have for the eye itself. So when I switch to the sad eye then I will switch the sad white part of the eye as well. When I switch to the normal eye the white part or the mat is also showing the normal shape. Let me first take care of cropping it and also taking care of the timeline. So I'm going to check my eye composition and see how these expressions are lined up over frames. It seems that I have normal, close, sad, angry normal, sad, angry, and we do not have close. So I'm going to make sure that the order of these layers are matched to the eye. So I want to start with the normal, then sad, then angry, and then I'm going to leave the close after all of these. For the close, since I do not have any mat, then I'm done with that. I want to put the close to be the last one, and I want to have the sad to be second, angry to be third, and so on. I'm going to do the same thing for the mat, normal, sad, angry. Let's get out of this, turning on the timer map tool on it. And also I need to make sure that I reposition it. I'm going to turn off the pupil so you can see what I'm doing here. I believe they are lined up properly, but I'm going to double check the other drawings as well. So I'm going to turn on the toggle hold keyframe. All right, drawing zero is loaded for both of them, which is a normal eye. I'm going to go to the next frame and I'm going to load drawing number two for both of these. Just to be sure, I'm going to check the drawing number three as well, which is the angry. And it seems that the white part is now lined up properly. So you can see that when I switch to any of drawing replacements for the eye, I need to update my mat as well. Soon, I'm going to show you how we can connect these two together using expressions. So we only need to deal with one layer here when we are animating between in different drawing replacements. And now I'm going to use this layer to act as a mat for the pupil. So I'm going to turn on the pupil and I'm going to have this mat layer to act as a mat for this pupil. Luckily in the updates in After Effects, we can have layers sitting somewhere in the composition and act as a mat for any other layer that is not close by it. Previously, it wasn't like that. We had to follow some extra steps. Now with the new update, it's as easy as having this layer to act as a mat for the pupil, although it's sitting underneath it. In order to be able to define a mat for any layer, we need to toggle switch between different modes here. In this tab, you can see that we have track mat that for all of the layers says there is no mat for those layers because by default, we want the layers to be visible. But for this pupil, for this specific layer, I want the layer underneath it to act as a mat for it, which is layer 47. So I may here and if it turns that layer off I'm going to manually turn that on and now you can see if I switch between different drawings loading up different shapes for the eye mat the pupil is now masked out to only be visible where the white part of the eye is visible so this is the way we set up the eyes using a different layer for the white part of the eye to act as a mat for the pupil this also helps us to have a better looking animation for the pupil as well so if the character is looking around it's only visible inside the eye which is what we want things are perfectly set up now. In order to make sure that if we want to animate or move the eye entirely up or down or left and right, we want to make sure that the pupils and the white part of the eye are also following it. So in that case, I'm going to, rather than parenting the pupils and the eye mat to the head, I'm going to parent them to the eye in case I want to animate the eye itself. The eye itself is parented to the head. So now if I grab the eye entirely, it's going to move the entire eye mat as well as the pupil all together. So I'm going to do some basic cleanup on this rig and make it a little bit more easy to navigate and find the layers that we want to animate. So the point here is that we need to make sure that we are only seeing the layers that we use for animation in the timeline and we are only seeing the controllers that we need to animate in the workspace. So in this case, I will say any drawing that is already having a pin on it and is not going to be touched in the timeline needs to be shied in the timeline. So in this case, for example, the wrist pin, we no longer want to see it in the viewport 
password nor we want to see it in timeline so we can actually lock them and we can shy them and hide them for the hand compositions although we don't want to animate them by their positions or rotations we want to animate their drawing replacements so we need to keep it here we don't need to shy it uh, for the right arm since it's already being deformed by the pins we need to shy it here the left leg as well the neck to the dress is also rigged the left arm is rigged left hand we want to keep it pin hidden shy sleeve is rigged hair tail eventually we are going to animate it using its pins for now since i want to be able to jump into that and set up the rest of the pins or even animate them individually i'm going to keep it available here the head uh, we have a controller for the head so we no longer need to see the drawing itself i'm going to shy that the ear here if you want to animate it and have it some overlapping up and down or swing on it keep it available here i want to just fix the anchor point of it in case i want to animate that hair side it's already rigged using the pins so i'm going to to shy it. hair ribbons i'm going to keep it available in case i want to jump into that mouth we need to keep it here because we want to switch between different drawing replacements for it the eye mat we do not want to see that however since it has the time remap tool on it eventually we need to connect it to the time remap tool of the eye itself for now i'm going to just leave it available pupil is going to be available in case i want to animate the pupil and the background i do not need that but i'm going to keep it here just in case in terms of the controllers luckily they are named properly so we are going to keep them some of the secondary controllers i'm going to just hide them because i would consider them secondary controllers and we do not get into animating them all the time it seems that i forgot to turn off one of the guide layers here so i'm going to disable the shy and uh, it's right here so i'm going to hide it and i'm going to do some more cleanup on the controllers themselves so i'm going to start with the right leg probably just bring it down a bit and i'm going to rotate that probably have the left icon to be on the left side of the character and this is a personal preference so do it as you desire and usually one of the ways that i can differentiate between different sides of the character is by color coding the controllers themselves so i will usually go with red for right and blue for left so if this is the right leg i'm going to change the color of that icon to red as well doing the same thing for the hands this is the left controller so i'm going to shift it to the left a little bit more line it up with the other controller keep in mind that we are just moving the icon and not the anchor point so we are safe wherever we want to place them this is the right controller so i'm going to color code it to right as well this is my main body controller so it's supposed to be slightly larger and uh, we want to make sure that it's grabbable easily in terms of the sleeves i have the pins here available i just hit them because i consider them secondary controllers when i set them up using expressions we don't even need to see them so we probably will even shy them from the timeline as well one more thing that we can do is color coding the layers as well by default duke angela color code all of the controllers to green color so i'm gonna color code the left layers to blue and the right layers to red and any middle controller to yellow but i feel like i mean the green controllers are all good here as well it seems that the sleeve here is not shy so i'm going to shy that too one more last thing that I usually add to my rigs is creating a controller that its job is to carry the entire character all together. Because of the way we set up the arms and the legs, they are by default set into IK mode, meaning that their controllers are supposed to act independently from the body. That's the nature of IQ controllers. That's why when I grab the main body controller and move it around, both hands as well as the feet are staying in place, which is perfect. This is what we want to get out of IQ controllers however sometimes we want to be able to grab the entire character and place it somewhere else in the canvas if we want to do that we need to grab the body controller all of the iks in this case the feet as well as the hand controller and move them around this might not be that easy if we are having some keyframes on these controllers so in those cases i usually create a master controller a placement controller that is a parent of all of these iq controllers as well as the body controller so i can grab that master controller drop my character anywhere that i want and be done with it i never use that controller for animation i only use that for placement purposes of my character I'm going to use Duik to create a very uh, unique controller for that placement controller, I call it. I usually choose something like this that indicates that it's a rotational and positional controller. It's going to be sitting somewhere in my composition, anywhere that I want. Usually I put them somewhere either on the feet or around the torso, the center of gravity. But I will say in this case, the feet are proper positions. Keep in mind that we are not using this controller for any animation. Name this controller placement. Make 
take this one yellow as well and it's going to be the parent of the body controller first it's parented to nothing i'm going to parent to the new placement controller and also i need to parent these controllers to that as well since we zeroed out these controllers using duke angela their position is set to zero only by a way of parenting them to a controller that is sitting exactly in the same position of those controllers and it's hidden and it's shy by default this is the way duke angela makes these zeroed out values you can see that i have one for arm one for the other arm and two for each one of the legs. This is coming from the old arm that I had before I fixed the sleeve drawing. So I'm going to remove that. Anyways, I need to make sure that I grab these zero add values that are currently apparent of those controllers and connect them to the placement controller. Now, if I grab this placement controller, you can see that it's moving the entire character all together. I want to emphasize that we never use this placement controller for animation purposes. If the character is falling or flying or jumping from somewhere to somewhere else, we should never animate the character using this placement controller. Just to make sure that the animator is not confused by this controller, I usually hide them as well. So they only find it if they really want that. So I'm going to go back and bring it back to its original position. And since this is a placement controller, there is no need for zeroing out the values because we can use it to place the character anywhere that I want and it's not going to mess up with any values on any controllers. We can call this rig done. So I'm going to collapse all of these layers and we can save this as a new version and we can move on to the next step.